Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review, this Lemon M1 Piston Filler. No, I'm not saying the pen is a lemon. Well, it actually is a lemon, but it's not. Let me clarify this. Let me clarify this. It is a lemon, but the lemon is not a lemon. I'm confused. Anyway, I think. Let me clarify this. Thank you for having me. Let's take a look right now. And even before opening this package from China, I can tell this pen is a real lemon. Ooh, I got a pen sleeve. See, I was right. It's a lemon. Well, I thought this was going to be some kind of red, but it's a, uh, it's a lemon and it looks brown. Your guess is as good as mine as what this is in terms of the manufacturer. Manual grinding. Lemon. Well, it's hard to tell, but this is a piston filler and it's the Hongdian design. We'll have to see how that bears up under wear. This, of course, is a dual fold like fountain pen with the Parker clip and everything and that lemon logo. So we'll have to see how that writes and whether it exchanges with Hongdian pens. But that's my guess, it's a Hongdian. A lemon by any other name would be the same. And I'll show the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Overall, the pen is a Parker Dual Fold Centennial knockoff. This one in a maroon colored enamel over metal alloy. It's the same size and shape as many of the other Parker Centennial knockoffs out there, like this Jinhao 100 Centennial that's been very popular over the last couple of years. This Moonman M600S, the Kaigaloo 316, and other Centennial knockoffs like the Conklin Durograph, and even the Pilot 845 can be considered inspired by. But all of those other clones, knockoffs, and inspired by pens, including the original Parker Dual Fold Centennial, our cartridge converters and this new lemon m1 is a piston filler and before we start looking at the details i want to say something right off the top about this new pen new fountain pen brands from china do not simply appear out of thin air especially not with this level of fit and finish quality how many of us knew what the hell a hongdian was a couple of years ago i didn't and what about asvine the first hongdians appeared with a nib that said 1997 on them, so even they claim to have 26 years of experience behind them. So sub-brands appear all the time. So what is this lemon a sub-brand of then? My guess is it's a Hongdian. The best clues are when parts are identical and fit together. It's a dead giveaway. And we'll see that when we look at this pen with the nib unit and the piston removed. But let's take a look at the pen first. From the top, we see a flat top finial with a medallion insert that says lemon with a lemon slice, which I assume is the brand logo. Now I can't go further without addressing the elephant sized lemon in the room. Do the Chinese have no Western culture consultants working for them at all? I know that Westerners are woefully ignorant about Eastern cultures, but when you're selling to the West and adopting brand names like Asvine and Lemon, Surely they must consider the implications of the names in the West. And don't call me Shirley. I mean, I'm all for accidental humor, but this is ridiculous. I belong to an Italian Facebook fountain pen group called La Penne Stilografica Oggi, or OG. And Facebook constantly translates nibs as nipples, which in Italian is capazzoli, not panini. I thought a panini was a food. Well, maybe it is. That leads to some rather juvenile smirks on my face as I read things like, can anyone recommend some really hard nipples for my pen? And this can lead to some really interesting combinations such as, my ass vine has extremely hard nipples, can you help? My recommendation to Hongdian is, hire me as your smirk evaluator. You send me your proposed model name or tagline, something like, feel the temperature of writing and I'll decode it and send it back with suggestions. But I digress. Again. The finial is separated from the cap by a gold metal ring that holds the clip in place. The clip is the classic Parker Arrow that is nicely springy and usable. The cap is straight to two gold metal cap bands, one thin and one thick. 
This is a handy way for you to tell this from a genuine Parker Centennial, as those had two cap bands of the same thickness. Oh yeah, you can also tell because it says lemon on the top. The cap tapers slightly after the bands to a small step down to the barrel, which is straight for its entire length, to two gold metal bands. The last band separates the barrel from the piston knob, which is tapered slightly and has a flat bottom. The cap unscrews with three quarters of a turn, which is very nice to reveal the tapering flared section with a gold metal ring at the top and gold metal cap threads at the bottom and the clear acrylic ink window at the top of the barrel. The section does not unscrew from the top of the barrel. And we see the number six size two-tone steel lemon nib and black plastic feed. The nib and feeder are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for maintenance or swapping and is identical to the Hongdian NS1 piston filler nib unit. The section has the same enamel over metal finish and is nicely comfortable. It's almost identical to the section of the Parker Duofold Centennial. Let's get a closer look at this nib. This is what Lemon, or at least the retailer, called a long knife nib. And this one is in the size, as advertised, 0.85 to 1.2 millimeters. That would be the size of the tipping not the size of the line, as we'll see. The nibs are available in eight different sizes, something we've rarely, if ever, seen from Chinese manufacturers. There are two, quote, blade nibs, four, quote, long knife nibs, an EF and an F available. And the nib is in a nice two-tone with a swoop on it that resembles a Yovo nib very closely. It has a circle with the lemon logo and lemon, and it says manual grinding. So the size is manually ground. And there is that interesting long knife, long blade nib with plenty of tipping material on it. And if you look carefully, it has a bit of a triangular or pear shape to it. So expect it to behave a little like a Naginata Togi in line variation. The inside of the cap shows a black plastic cap liner that seals the nib and also has the cap threads. The cap posts deeply and securely, something other Centennial clones and the Centennial itself don't do well at all. But it does make the pen long and back-weighted. That cap is fairly heavy and pulls the pen back. To balance the pen, you'd have to move back to the barrel. Unposted, however, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably, and how I prefer to write with this pen. I bought this pen from the AliExpress store Lusfer for $40.99 US. With the long knife nibs, the pen is $40.99. With the blade nibs, the pen is $34.99. And with the fine and extra fine nibs, the pen is $25.99 US. And the pen is available in four colors, black, red, light blue, and white, with two hardware options, silver and gold, and two finial options, either the lemon squeezy or the chrysanthemum design. I chose the lemon squeezy because I can't pronounce chrysanthemum, let alone spell it. Now I'm going to take this pen apart for you and show you the component parts and do some nib swapping for you as well before we get to some size comparisons and some measurements. So to further investigate the newest addition to the Parker Duofold Centennial Clone Group, this Lemon M1, and to investigate whether this is in fact a Hongdian brand, because there's so many brands out there now. This one's a Lemon, which... Again, unfortunate naming, but worth a grin or two anyway. So let's take this pen apart, and I'm going to use my LT Hongdian piston wrench tool to see whether I can take this piston apart. So let's take the cap off. Let's remove the nib. There's the nib. And let's see whether it exchanges with my latest Hongdian piston filler. Boy, they look similar, don't they? And there you go. Yep, the lemon fits the Hongdian N1S. Which has this piston, which is very similar to this one, as we will see. Let's open the piston. Put our tool in those little slots. We hold the tool 
and screw down the piston knob sandwiching the tool and then we use the barrel to release the piston and there it is so let's take the Hongdian N1S piston out and see whether this one goes in which as you probably suspected it does there you go so there are our parts let's uh, let's put the nib unit back in the section for a moment and using the the barrel as some leverage we're going to see if we can pull that nib no it doesn't want to pull I'll have to soak that for a bit to see whether I can pull it out and we'll see that size of nib and see whether it's compatible with other number six size nibs so I finally got the nib out of the collar and it took an overnight of soaking in water and dove soap um, and then a lot of pulling I basically took my rubber mat and pulled and wiggled and wiggled side to side I didn't turn because it unscrew uh, the nib unit itself they sort of wiggled it back and forth for quite a while until I got it out so now the question is how standard is that number six size nib I've already swapped it with the Hongdian unit so we know the Hongdian number six nib will fit in there uh, but what about things like this Kaigalu right here this is a Jinhao number six standard this is a Bach number six and this is a Leonardo elastic steel number six and it's made by Yovo so we got Yovo Bach Jinhao and Kaigalu let's try the standard Bach and Jinhao first to see if they work again we're using the feed from the lemon and I line the feed up with where it just touches the swoop of those tines and it's keyed so we're gonna line up the key and push it in most nibs will fit in there it's whether there's cap clearance or not so I'll screw the cap on no I don't feel any resistance at all so let's pull that Bach out because we know it fits and we'll try the Yovo yep works now let's try the Jinhao number six yep no worries and the Kai Glue long blade long knife that one went in the easiest of all of them no worries at all so this lemon M1 might be a real go-to piston filler dual fold centennial type pen for those who love to swap nibs now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the lemon m1 piston filler in maroon red with a jinhao 100 centennial in galaxy a moonman m600s in teal the kaigaloo 316 in amber and an asvine p20 in purple acrylic now let's look at them posted and here they are posted none of them are great posters but the lemon is actually the best of the lot now let's look at them unposted and here they are unposted only the lemon and the asvine are piston fillers the others are cartridge converters and you'll be seeing two new asvine p20s coming soon as i have two more coming in two new colors amber and galaxy something to look forward to now let's look at some measurements and then i'll be back with a writing sample <music> And we're back with the writing portion of the review this is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the lemon M1 and it has a number six size steel long knife nib 
Let's check the wetness here. As you can see, it's nicely wet. And this nib, for an architect type grind, is extremely smooth. It's one of the smoothest architect style, Naginata style, long blade, long knife, whatever you want to call it, type grinds that I've ever experienced right out of the box. And this one's advertised to be 0 0.85 uh, to 1.2 millimeters. And again, that's the physical size of the tipping material, I believe, that they're measuring because it's not the line width. But the nib is wonderful with just a hint of feedback. And I haven't touched this nib at all. It's nicely wet and smooth. And the ink today is diamine or diamine, depending on your persuasions. Oxblood, which I think is a really nice match to this pen. And here are some closed matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. And as to line variation, well, that's what this nib is advertised to do, but without any pressure. It bounces a little bit, surprising for a Chinese steel nib, but uh, the line variation comes from the shape of the grind. You get a thin vertical line and a thick horizontal line. But it's also showing signs, as I mentioned earlier, of uh, behaving like a Naginata Togi nib, which is a bit of a pear shape, uh, so that when you hold your pen at a vertical angle, you get a very thin line, both vertically and horizontally. And as you increase the angle of the pen to the page, the vertical increases a little bit and the horizontal increases a lot. As you can see that thickness starting. And when you get down to like 30 degrees, there's the vertical and there's the thick horizontal. So in regular writing, the vertical line on this pen is 0 0.3 millimeters and the horizontal again regular writing is 0 0.9 millimeters which makes it a western triple xf too broad or a japanese xf to double broad on the Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description below and if you hold the pen vertically that line goes down to a 0 0.1 millimeter which is called a needle point you can also get a very thin line by reversing the nib it's much scratchier but you actually get a very thin dry line out of it so there's lots of variation here lots of options uh, for those sketchers out there who like lots of line variation in one pen and with a great ink supply as well at 1.3 milliliters. And for our quote. And for some quick writing. no issues whatsoever this is a very nicely wet and flowing nib so what do i like and what do i not like about this fountain pen well i really didn't expect to like this fountain pen uh, for some reason i don't know what perhaps it's just prejudiced against the new brand but this pen is extremely well built with solid construction it's hard to beat the form factor of this pen as it's one of the most popular styles of fountain pen in history based on the reissue of the Parker Duofold to celebrate Parker's 100th anniversary in 1987, the Parker Duofold Centennial. But the best part of this Centennial clone is the nib. This long blade nib might cost $15 more, but it's really worth it. The effortless line variation and flair you get in your writing from this pen in an extremely wide range is really marvelous. Turn the nib over and you get a needle point as well. And the pen comes with a huge 1.3 milliliter ink supply and an ink window as well and it's the only centennial clone fountain pen i know of that's a piston filler the only pen that comes close to its size and form factor with a piston is the pelican m800 
let me know if you know of another. I know you might say that the Hongdian NS1 is a piston filler that's close in size, but this pen is modeled on the Pelican, not on the Centennial. The only negative I can think of about this pen is the material, and therefore the weight. Because it's made of a metal alloy, and I'm saying metal alloy because it doesn't look or feel like brass to me, it's some kind of white metal alloy. Because it's a metal pen, it's heavy and visually uninteresting with only four colors. If Lemon could make this out of turned acrylic, say some of the cool acrylic stock that Hongdian seems to have in stock right now, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more. Snap, snap, green, green, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. They'd really have a winner on their hands, and it would rival the very popular Jinhao 100 Centennial. Can you see this pen? in this galaxy acrylic i can and i'd buy that for a dollar <laughs> i'd buy that for a dollar <laughs> and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and please look in the description for a link to goldspot pens as i'm now an affiliate of the online store and when you shop at goldspot using my link you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you you can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and i guarantee i'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching And that's all she wrote. I made this.